Hey guys. So today's video is number four in the NAMI principles of support, which is we aim for better coping skills. And I think that is very pertinent to the situation I am in now because, you know, like I've said before, I was so overwhelmed with everything that was going on in my life um, earlier in the year that I couldn't cope with anything. And instead of um, continuing to go to Manami meetings and continuing counseling and, you know, continuing seeing a psychiatrist or whatnot, um, I just stopped doing anything. And I didn't talk about anything. And I, you know, instead of, instead of using coping skills that I have learned in the past, I just shut down because I couldn't handle it. I guess I needed a break, you know, and now me trying to get back into counseling and all that stuff, you know, I think that just the fact that I was thinking about it and I'm doing it, um, is a coping skill in and of itself because I'm not just letting myself float out there and just, you know, letting whatever happened happen. Um, you know, hopefully I can go to my NAMI meeting this week. Hopefully nothing gets in the way of that because it, going there, talking to those people, um, just getting support, listening to what others have to say in their situations. It just, sometimes it puts things in perspective. You know, they give good advice and sometimes they just, you know, they just tell you, you know, if you need to talk, I'm here. And sometimes that's enough, um, to know that there are people around me who are supporting me and who I can support and, you know, just, just have that kind of community kind of thing going on. It's really like a family. <laughs> um, that's how I see it. So I, I think that the way that we cope has a big impact on our mental and physical health. And I can't stress this enough that the healthy, positive coping skills that you have learned or have been taught or have heard about, read about, whatever. It's just like anything else in life. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But you have to keep going, you know what I mean? Like you can't just stop. And that is kind of what I did. I mean, I guess you can stop, but it's not healthy to stop, you know, and to, to find you know, negative outlets isn't necessarily the best way. You might think it is at the time, you know, but I think once, at least for me, you know, I realized that not having any support around me whatsoever was making it harder to cope at all, at all. You know, I even stopped making videos as much because I was... <sighs> You know, I felt a little bit ashamed that I, w I didn't have any of those resources anymore. And I felt like I was sort of letting myself down and letting you guys down in the sense that, you know, I promoted getting all this help and everything. And I've even put videos up of, like, codepe my codependency video and stuff like that. Um, and then I just stopped. <laughs> so, and a lot of that was because I, I couldn't handle stuff anymore. I needed a break. I needed to just let the dust settle and figure out what it is that I really need, what I really want in terms of my, my health. And what I want is to be as healthy as I can be. That doesn't mean that every single day I'm going to be healthy. Um, it doesn't mean that if... I go to counseling that it's going to 
um, fix everything, but at least I'll be trying to manage my health, trying to manage whatever's going on in a healthy way as best I can so I don't slip and do something that I, I will regret later. So yeah, I think that this video comes at a great time considering where I am with my with my mental health and everything. I need to get back into coping skills. And I, I've started, you know, I've started writing in my journal and making more videos. Um, and, you know, getting back into counseling and all that stuff. So, you know, I'm making the steps that I think are important, you know, and also wanting to go back to my support group. I really think that that is a positive, those are positive steps. It's not just one step. Those are, those are, that's multiple steps right there. And it's all kind of happening at once. But I think the faster I can throw myself into a supportive situation, the better off I'll be. So remember, aim for better coping skills. Aim for positive, healthy coping skills. And even if you get discouraged, tomorrow's another day. You know, we all have bad days, some worse than others, but tomorrow will come and you won't always feel this way. It, it'll, it will pass, you know, but the key is to be able to learn how to manage, you know, and know that you can surround yourself with support, even if it's not from family family is a lot from a lot of the videos that I've seen on YouTube about mental health family tends to be the least supportive out there which is really ironic considering that saying like blood is thicker than water family should you know family should be your main number one support and you know what for a lot of people it's not it is not it really isn't or you get like support in a way that's kind of condescending you know what I mean like it's like <laughs> it's like you know you, you tell somebody okay I have a mental illness like a parent or, or sibling or whoever and they just they're like oh well if you ever need to talk I'm here but I don't think you have a mental illness that kind of thing you know what I mean like who, what gives you the right to tell me that I have a mental illness or I don't? You're not a doctor and you don't know what's going on inside my head. So keep your opinions to yourself, seriously. Um, you know, and for all those family members and friends out there, when your family member or family members and or slash friends tell you that they are going through something just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's not real and telling them that it's not real or telling them to get over it or telling them it's all in their head or whatever nonsense that you spew out of your mouth keep it to yourself if you have nothing positive to say nothing supportive to say or you can't act supportive, don't bother opening your mouth. Don't bother. Don't even say anything negative because you are going to make that person feel really, really bad, even if you don't intend to, even if you don't realize what you're saying is hurtful. Even if you think it's helpful, it's not. And it makes it harder to cope with a mental illness when you have friends and family constantly making you feel like, you're lying or that there's nothing wrong with you when you know that there there is something wrong with you you know what I mean so seriously keep your negativity to yourselves because you have I don't know if you've ever seen your family family's videos that are on here but if you actually listen to what they say okay they're not faking they're suffering they really are so yeah if you have nothing positive or nothing um, to help that person, keep it to yourself because that negativity is not helpful. And that's all I got to say to you guys about that. Um, and those are to the family members and friends of people who have told 
them what they're going through and they just kind of blow it off or make them feel like it's not real or whatever the situation is. So that's why we have this community here on YouTube because we understand, we know, you know, we might not understand everything that somebody else goes through, but we know that they're not faking. We know that they're telling the truth. So, and we're here to support them. And that's really sad when your family and friends can't do that for you. It really is. It's sad. You know, so if you are having trouble coping with your family, friends, you know, we're here on YouTube. I'm here. There's a lot of great people out there who are making videos, you know, not just about bipolar, but any, any sort of mental, psychological issue going on. You know, it, we're here. It, it's, to me, it's just mental health. Whatever that is, all under one umbrella, it's not specifically bipolar or specifically one other thing. It's not like that for me. It's everything. Anything that has to do with mental health, psychological health, emotional health, it's all under the same category for me. So, yeah, I think, you know, being able to express your feelings and being able to be true to yourself is, like, the best coping skill you can have, you know, so, yeah, just try to stay positive. Try something healthy. Even if you don't want to, try it. You never know. It might make you feel good. You know, and give it time, too. Don't think, I did it once. It didn't work. Ah, oh, it's not going to work. It's, that's not how life is. You have to try and try and try. And even if you um, don't succeed, well, guess what? Try again. You know, it's it, life is hard. So it, it, it's not a quick fix. Nothing is. So just keep that in mind. All right, well, I'm going to go because I just wanted to, you know, just talk about coping and, and all that stuff. And, you know, I think I'm on the right track to being able to cope a lot better with stuff. So at least getting to the right place where I can start coping anyway. Okay, well, I'm going to go now. So you guys enjoy your afternoon. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye now.